process is very fair, very complete, and I, I know um, having a, a, a AAA, uh, for lack of a better expression, candidate internally that uh, other people just flat out, as Dr. Kite said, won't apply for the job. I also think you put yourself at high risk of having somebody that's been mentored for a long time and understands the system well. Uh, obviously, this sounds like a, an endorsement for Matt, I'm just making some statements here. Um, I think that uh, you have to give strong consideration to somebody like that because if if uh, that person is not uh, hired, um, they're very very easily can find uh, a job somewhere else. I, I look at it as just 
very hard to duplicate many of the things and, and a lot of the, the internal mentoring and uh, understanding of the Northfield community. Uh, being born and raised here is not an easy thing to do by itself. So I'm just uh, very impressed with the process uh, to date of what we've done so far. And I do believe we're here to make a decision on whether or not uh, we choose this candidate, but those are my comments. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Um, yeah. okay. um, I think that when we we looked at the the profile was developed without a specific candidate in mind. It was just what are your your what do you want out of it? Superintendent, what are the characteristics of an outstanding superintendent? Um, it seems to me, looking at all this feedback, that comparing it against that kind of general objective standard that almost everybody who's ever sat in that Hillman meets that profile. So just at a sort of having that general standard, I think that that comparison is important. and. I think that it's interesting because I started on the board in 2013 when we were talking about iPads and it was something that Matt was very strongly associated with and I was the one board member to vote against it. So I started out on the board disagreeing with him about something and I think that despite that I have come to have a very, very, very strong relationship with him and so I think that he is the kind of person who can take somebody who's even you know disagreeing with him who's who's doesn't see things exactly his way and make that person an ally and work together to work to go forward on a shared vision for the district and so it's not about him and he makes you see that your position is not it's not you winning or him winning, it's about the district winning. So how do you come together to do that? I just think his skill at working with people and managing situations like that are really strong qualifications for this job in, in the Northfield community where you're constantly having to deal with very intelligent people with different opinions and I think he navigates those things extremely well. My comment is that there are a lot of deep changes that I would like to see in the Northfield School's core curriculum and that Matt and I have talked about that a lot and he is, uh, his instinct is always to be much more incremental and consultative than my impatience would dictate. But at the same time, my own humility is that probably my vision for the changes that I want to see are on the surface of a giant edifice of other work that's already going on. And so when people ask me why I wanted to be on the board, I politically but also truthfully said, job one is surely stewardship and job two is making change happen and so the reason that I am very confident in endorsing Matt is because the stewardship aspect is something that is already proven and that I just simply have no questions about at all and the change aspect is something that I have every confidence that he is a good partner for and as far as that goes, a bit of a good foil for since we moderate each other in that department. So although on paper and uh, after the third cup of coffee, my impulse would be, let's change everything tomorrow. Wouldn't that be the right thing to do? <laughs> that, that will be, that like Tomorrow, everything will be brighter once the changes that I most want are put into place. 
realistically having someone who said who has excellent judgment about how to proceed carefully remember that there are stakeholders that I'm not even don't even have my eye on considerations that I don't have my eye on makes that seem and because he's someone that I fundamentally like and trust it makes him a good foil and a good partner although his instincts are more conservative than mine or possibly because his instincts are more conservative than mine. Sure. So um, I thought maybe I'd talk a little bit to the, the process piece too because I've been on the subcommittee and certainly have listened to and um, talked with community members. And I guess there's two points I wanted to talk about in terms of that. One is it's clear that politically it m might have been easier to have an external search right away. It's clear from my personal life it would have been a whole lot easier to push it off into May. Um, but I guess what I was going into it is wanting to make sure that we were going to have the best candidate and, um, and the best um, person to make an offer to in the end. That was what my, the biggest thing was. And thinking about this process is making sure, you know, if we had gone external, we, you know, we don't know what that would have looked like, but I wanted to really feel confident that what the approach we meant that in the end of the day, I would feel like we hired the right person. Um, so I guess that that I felt I to morning, this morning when I woke up, I felt like it was still the right thing to do. And at the end of today, I was going to feel really good about whatever decision we arrived came to. Um, and then there's the other thing is the approach that we're taking with the profile. Um, and as an evaluator, I'm, my job is to make a judgment often. And you can do that by having a number of things and ranking them. And when you have a suite of candidates and have done, having done a lot of hires, you're doing this norming thing. And the other thing is where you have this sort of profile where you're looking at a piece of work and you're looking at it in terms of a rubric. And so I'm really comfortable um, with, you know, sure, maybe we would have had multiple candidates. I would have been fine with that. But I'm really comfortable making a judgment, looking at one and taking a look at a profile and being able to make a judgment. So. From my perspective, I've, I'm comfortable with that. So that, that's just a personal preference. And so then the last piece, moving from process to the candidate, um, I'll just say that I asked the first question about vision, and I wasn't quite sure where that about the response. And so I had picked one of the community members had a question, and I had that ready. And he blew me away with the, his, his, the last response, and I'll just say, if I had gone into this with any pieces that I really wanted to learn from Matt, I, I've seen his leadership, I've seen how he builds trust, I've seen how he makes mistakes, I've seen situations where I haven't been as comfortable with the situation, but I've been very comfortable with his approach. What I wasn't sure about was his vision, I'll have to be really honest, because he, he's all about we, and he's very supportive of Dr. Richardson. And at the end of the day, I wasn't sure what I was going to hear from him, and he blew me away with this last response. I think I felt really good about his vision, the ideas he has. Um, we heard a lot from the comments about addressing mental health, and I really appreciated Margaret's question. Um, so I guess um, I feel really good about um, the candidate we had today. It's really been a wonderful opportunity for leadership, and I'm glad that I wasn't denied the opportunity at the last election. <laughs> Part of what makes it such a wonderful community and an opportunity is what the process we used touched so many areas, and uh, we had so much input, and I read all the information, and I really thank people that provided us with all that information with their ideas, their insight. Um, I want to, I too was a little concerned about having one candidate. Uh, I was hoping we'd have more, but you can't, my dad would say, you can, you can leave the horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And if the can, other candidates, or the other possible uh, people didn't want to sign up for the job, so be it. Um, but I had an interesting experience in my business career. and. and take a moment. I, I interviewed, I, I'd been facility manager for about five years, and 
I needed to fill a position of mechanical engineer. And so I interviewed the fourth candidate. He was a retired gentleman who had sold his business for 42 years. Uh, about a year earlier, he'd finished up all the to-do lists in the house, and he was looking for something. To and so I interviewed him. He interviewed extremely well, and I got done. He said, do I get the job? And I said, no, i got eight more people. Or I, I have uh, five more people to interview. He said, well, in my 42 years of experience, let me share with you what I have learned. He said, certainly, we need the usual things in my business. I needed technical skills, and I needed experience, and a good communicator, and someone who could help build my company to a higher level than it is now. I needed all of that. But I also then went back and I looked at my own criteria, not only what personnel sent through, because then I was just choosing from the, all the eight candidates or nine candidates, but he said I used my own person criteria and included intelligence, trustfulness, humility, exuberance, and integrity. And he stopped at exuberance and integrity for an unusual long time. And he looked at me in the eye and he said, if you don't have the integrity, the exuberance is going to kill you. Mm -hmm. and, and that changed my style of thinking about interviewing. And so when we looked at this, we, we, we established a profile that we wanted. I thought it was fair in that it involved so many people. We do need somebody with proper education, administrative experiences and skills, and able to communicate at all levels, for, for, uh, worthy of our trust. But intelligence, humility, and exuberance, integrity. And I listened to Dr. Hillman, and I think, there's a man that I think can match and meet all of those requirements. And so uh, I've observed Dr. Hillman and doing iPads and negotiations, and uh, he, he, he's been an exemplary role model in every case, uh, not without some faults, which he admits and said, I could do better next time. But uh, I've observed him in numerous situations, supervisory situations as well. And I believe he possesses the talents that he needs. And I certainly support Dr. Hillman for a position of superintendent. Okay, so um, I'll just conclude by um, thanking um, board members for, for your views and for the discussion and really for articulating your views about the process and the candidate. Um, I think we've all recognized that hiring a superintendent is one of the most important, in, in my view, single most important responsibilities we have as a school board. I also appreciated the importance the board placed on um, having our district stakeholders not only being informed of the process, but also taking an active role in the hiring of our next superintendent. So for me, again, as a member of the, the search subcommittee, um, even prior to that, the, the process for me began with my own reflection of what I have learned over the course of my seven years on the school board. And during this time, I've come to have an, an appreciation for the great source of pride our schools have for this community. Northfield has high expectations for their schools. Our district's mission statement, which in part states that we will deliver educational excellence, acknowledges our commitment to this community. So with this, with this knowledge that I supported the decision to begin the search internally, by looking first within the district's own ranks for, their qualified, can, for qualified candidates, I would have the ability to determine if during their tenure they had gained an understanding of our community's high expectations for its schools and that they have consistently demonstrated their commitment to a culture that fosters educational excellence. In my mind, these are essential in order for our next superintendent to be successful in moving our district forward. And lastly, as we've all pointed, the new superintendent profile that was developed it was essential that an internal candidate would be a strong match. So as we moved forward in the process and, and Dr. Hillman came forward as the candidate, candidate, I was able to reflect on what I had learned about Dr. Hillman from my firsthand experiences over the past seven years. 
that he's a dedicated administrator who has proven himself time and time again to be an excellent communicator, skillful in dealing with the most difficult challenges, as well as a passionate and dedicated educator whose goal is to serve all of our students to the best of his abilities. I share Ellen's comment. What I didn't know, however, before tonight's board's interview of Dr. Hillman was, his under, was the understanding of his vision for how to move our district forward. Having heard that, I believe that his vision, combined with his, his length and depth of experience, his key understanding of the community we serve, and his demonstrated commitment to excellence is why, without reservation, I fully support him as the next superintendent of our school. So, we've all weighed in. Is there any other discussion people would like to have? Okay. So, um, with that, if someone is ready to move forward with the motion. Okay. Motion to approve the employment of Dr. Matthew Hillman as superintendent of Northfield Public Schools effective July 1, 2016, and to direct superintendent search subcommittee of Rob Hardy, Ellen Iverson, and Julie Pritchard to develop a mutually agreeable contract with Dr. Hillman. Said recommended contract will be presented to the Northfield Board of Education at its April 25th, 2016 regular school board meeting. So a motion by Jeff. There's a motion, is there a second? Second by Ellen. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Let's go to a roll call Let's vote. Let's go to a roll call vote. Bogat? Aye. Iverson? Aye. Stratlon? Aye. Quinnell? Aye. Colangelo? Nay. Hardy? Aye. Um, Pritchard? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. So we have, um, what I do, I just have some, one final comment. Um, I think we've all expressed our thanks to the community for a part, being a part of this process. So I do want to thank members of the community, district staff, and administrators for their invaluable input. The feedback you provided at focus group meetings, the time you took to complete the online survey, or your willingness to be a part of the interview team was vital to the process of selecting our district's next superintendent. Lastly, a huge thank, to De thank you to Danita Delzer. <laughs> for the amazing job she did coordinating the efforts as we move through this phase one of the search. So, with that, um, that concludes uh, the business for tonight's meeting. No. I got some business. <laughs> I think Julie has done an excellent job in leading us. Uh, I don't expect that when you signed on as chair, you probably thought this was going to be part of my responsibility. But you have done an extremely good job. You have led us focused us and allowed us to speak, but uh, you've done a great job, and I thank you very much for that. Well, thank you. We've all been, uh, I it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kite, for your efforts, of course. Okay, so um, that concludes our business for tonight's meeting. With that, I ask for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Moved by Noel. Second? Second. Second by Fritz. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.